Well, I was going to do Oxid next, but completing that is going to take a little longer than expected, so... Hey, Desert Trek! Desert Trek was made as shareware in 1994 by one Kerry Torkelson. You'll see Kerry Torkelson here on Gamer Mouse a few times, by the way. Just like I need to do with Dwayne Blem, and John Calhoun, and Storm Impact, and Ambrosia, and Bungie. You haven't done anything with Dark Castle since last we met, have you? Yeah, yeah, and Silicon Beach too. I'm not exactly short on ideas, is all I'm saying. Anyways, before that was another shareware game called Camel, also by Torkelson, in 1991, which I believe is based off of the Camel out of more basic computer games in 1979. For those who don't know, there used to be magazines or books with lots of different simple pieces of code in them that you would type into your computer, in this case in basic, so you'd both end up with something to play and learn something about coding as you go. Maybe you could even change things around to make them interesting, make them your own thing. It's actually kind of neat. Things aren't that simple to code anymore, but it's nice to think about. So what we have here is a shareware game, based off of one of the author's previous shareware games, which itself is based off of a two-page block of basic code in a 1979 book. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna skip the basic game and go straight to Camel. I'll leave the link in the description and let you mess around with the basic compiler yourself, if you really want to do that. Camel was released in 1991, making this as old as I am. This works on pretty much any classic Mac, but will always be completely in monochrome. Your goal is as simple as can be. Travel 400 kilometers across the Gobi Desert on your camel while outrunning the hungry pygmy cannibals that are somehow able to chase after you the entire time with no rest or other resources. Okay, maybe that's not the simplest thing to do. I mean, I'd sunburn in no time flat out there. I mean, seriously, look at me. My free time's at night. When's the last time I've seen the sun? Ugh. On top of dealing with the encroaching wall of death that is the pygmies, you have to contend with hunger, thirst, your camel's fatigue, thieving caravans, kidnapping Berbers, and oh. sandstorms. The only help you'll get is the occasional oasis and friendly caravan, and whatever good Samaritan may deign to give you supplies if you try to await help as a last resort. So needless to say, you might die a few times. There's a help screen that explains how things work, but it's simple enough. Each day is divided up into four turns, during each of which you can do one action. Eating and drinking don't count, but the pygmies will move Ow. a kilometer or two while you do because... reasons. Also, apparently the best way to ration food and water is to wait until you're hours away from starving or dehydrating to death. Okay, okay, I know it's a video game, but I still don't think that's how anything works. Then again, you are crossing a desert with very limited supplies, so... I guess it sort of makes sense, you could make that work long enough to at least cross everything. Wouldn't be healthy, but it might still work. Still doesn't explain how the pygmy cannibals are chasing you with no rest and seemingly no food or water gathering. Then again, they could all be acting as a big group and it all sort of averages out. Damn it, my logic is making sense out of nonsense. How does that even work? The rest of the game makes a surprising amount of sense for an old shareware game. Your hunger goes up constantly, your thirst goes up constantly, except during midday where it goes up more except during a sandstorm which protects you from the sun. Obviously, food and drink empty these meters. The game explains how much your camel's fatigue goes up and how far you can travel at the normal and fast paces, but basically, fatigue goes up more and you travel less closer to midday. Resting at night empties fatigue, a random amount in the morning or evening, and not at all during midday. Basically, midday really sucks. The game is almost about using everything but midday effectively. At night especially, you can fully rest, or you can burn across up to 24 kilometers of desert for only two fatigue in one turn. Oh, but you still have the caravans, which could be good or bad for both distance and supplies, and there's the, uh, wild Berbers that will kidnap you. You'll get released at some point, and your thirst, hunger, and fatigue will go to minimum. If the pygmies are approaching too close, you can attempt to escape. This has a third chance of working, a third chance of setting back your release, and a third chance of getting you killed. Sandstorms can also randomly pop up, giving you a chance to travel the wrong direction and reducing your rest. For some reason, you can just wait during sandstorms. This is the only puzzling design choice, as if you were going to wait, 
You may as well just rest. Even the help file says as much. The await help button gives you some chance to live if anything else would just kill you. If it works, you get supplies and can continue. If not, well, you die, but at least you have some chance if you've had bad luck finding an oasis or friendly caravan. So, there's a bit of luck involved, but the game isn't too hard to complete, at least when you get a hang of how fatigue works. That's really the most difficult part, and it's not too bad. With the right events happening, you can really sprint ahead to the Pygmies and reach, um, some city at the edge of the Gobi Desert. Don Huang? I don't know. Apparently the game takes place in modern day because there's a jet plane flying overhead. Well, if this is modern day, I know what to do about those Pygmies. <sighs> oh, and I know this is made by one guy, but look at the city there. At least make a different background or put the building behind the hill. Something. Ah. So how do you follow up a deadly 400 kilometer trek across the Gobi Desert? It's quite simple, actually. Follow it up with one that's two and a half times longer. Okay, there's more changes than that, but Desert Trek is essentially a beefed up camel. Well, as beefed up as the internet connections of the time would allow, anyways. The game will still fit on a 400k floppy and basically work on almost any classic Mac. At the least, I know it works as far back as a Macintosh Plus. Though the Oasis is hard to see at night, but what can you do? It comes with monochrome and 16 color graphics, sounds to easily identify things happening, skill levels, and even some strange additions like saving your game journals and being able to merge high score files. In case you wanted to compete with your friends who's the better desert tracker? I know I'm not one to ask about friends, but did anyone here know about this game before now? Much less have friends that wanted to compete with your mad desert track skills? I'm not even sure the internet listens when I rant about this stuff, much less be so lucky to meet someone in real life that also plays this stuff. Well, alright, considering Kerry Torkelson does have a book out there, which I have a copy of, maybe this game was better known than I thought? The CD itself is on the garden if you want to check out the source code and whatnot, and I'd track down the book if you're interested in Macintosh programming, it is an interesting read. So, what's different about Desert Trek's gameplay? Quite a bit, surprisingly. Oh, the base mechanics are all still there, even if tweaked a little bit. For example, Midday isn't completely useless now, but the basic pattern is still there. There's now potentially dangerous paths to avoid, and the wonderful oasis is... Oases. Anywho, they now have a small chance of being just a mirage. Not to mention your camel now has health as well. An injured camel won't travel as far. Luckily, the oases do heal your camel as well, along with the new item, elixirs. Or, um, elixirs. How many games am I going to run into that I have to spell check? At least this one's made by, like, one guy, so... At least it's not as glaring as some things I've reviewed. Oh, great. Now it's just harder, you think. Not entirely. There are some new features that actually help you. There are now abandoned campsites where you can find gold, which you can use at the trading post to buy supplies, or bribe the Berbers to let you free early. The trading posts and friendly caravans can also give you two new items, the compass and binoculars. The compass is a permanent, well, semi-permanent upgrade. The unfriendly caravans can still steal it, while they apparently beat your camel as injury comes with failing oh. to avoid them. Oh. Speaking of which, they make you rather fatigued now. Oh. I've died way too many times running my camel to death trying to avoid some damn seedy caravan. Basically, if you're not ready to travel fast pace, you could die. Anyways, the compass actually negates the potential of going backwards in a sandstorm. They still slow you down, and your camel is still more prone to injury, but at least you know you'll go forward, preventing a fair bit of wasted time. The binoculars will let you see the state of an object ahead. Because interacting with objects takes an entire turn, you may want to see if a campsite has gold, a trading post is closed, or an oasis is a mirage, taking the cannibal's short distance rather than the whole turn, complete with the encroaching hunger, thirst, etc. Their most useful function may be in examining paths and caravans, though, as if a dangerous path is actually safe, or a caravan friendly, you can feel safe running through that path or approaching the caravan. Very nice for caravans, as they have a good chance of propelling you ahead at fast pace while your stats get improved, or giving you much needed supplies, including a small chance of getting you a compass or binoculars. Or both. If that happens, you're way luckier than I am. On top of all the changes, there's now 10 difficulty levels to keep things a bit fresh. Each difficulty level tweaks basically every parameter to be more difficult. 
Your hunger, thirst, and fatigue increases. Injury rates and amounts. What percentage of caravans are unfriendly? How often unsure paths are dangerous? Trading post closed. Mirages, sandstorms, escape chances, release chances, the distance you travel, the distance cannibals travel, the cost of everything. Think of a parameter and it's changed to your detriment. Yeah, I may have looked at the source code for that. From a player perspective, everything just feels slightly more unfair as you crank the difficulty up. One is super easy, and as long as you're not being stupid, or have really bad luck, which I'm well familiar with, you should be fine. It's good for getting used to how the game works. By the time you get to five, you'll probably be dying a lot. The highest level I've completed is seven. Manage that a grand total of twice. Can't fault me for not trying, I've got hours and hours of footage of this game, both in monochrome and color, and that's not even all of my attempts. Some things really do make the game harder. The few kilometers the cannibals travel when you so much as use or even buy items is quite irritating, and you'll basically never end the game by camel injury, unless you're on an easy difficulty or just really lucky and pulled way ahead of the cannibals. Why? Well, the less health your camel has, the less it travels. This makes elixirs essential, and while an oasis will heal your camel, you can only get extra elixirs from two places. Friendly caravans, which, without binoculars, can easily kill you or injure your camel even more, or buying them from trading posts, which requires rummaging around the abandoned campsites. I will say that the game is heavily luck-based. Everything is basically a roll of the RNG. What you run into, how far you travel, the cannibals travel, if your camel is injured, if your binoculars work, if they break, etc, etc, etc. Though it's a little hard to fault it for this when the source code is out there and you can just have a look-see at how the game ticks yourself. Still, traveling at a fast pace and getting basically nowhere because of a bad RNG roll can be infuriating. In short, there's more to do and more ways to do it, but it's still simple enough that it's not terribly hard for even someone like a preteen me to get their mind around it. Not bad for something that started in the pages of a basic programming book. Not bad at all. Speaking of, there's a slightly newer version on the book's disc, 1.04 versus the 1.02 that used to be the only thing on the garden. I think 1.04 fixes caravan messages and how graphics are handled if you die via short cannibal travel, along with a constant display of your score. They're essentially the same thing though, so don't worry too much about which version you have. As for emulators, Camel seems to run fine in anything. Desert Trek you should probably run in Sheep Shaver. Mini VMAC will freeze once in a while and crash on the high scores list. Still saves them just fine, go figure. Basilisk 2? Well, I've had it freeze and wipe my high scores. I wouldn't use it. Also on this book's disc is a reskin called Vegas Trek. It's basically the same game, but with all the oh. graphics and text changed. It's sort of entertaining, though it's basically something us Mac nerds would do out of boredom with res edit and image editing oh. software back in the day. I wouldn't recommend this version, though, as all the events are so small you can easily oh. miss them. Look at the hitchhiker, he's microscopic! Not that it isn't a problem with the monochrome desert trek oh. occasionally, like with the Oasis. Well, okay, I'd recommend it once, as it ends with a clip of the Aerosmith song, Walk This Way. No, really. Good old 90s shareware, when you could do that and not be afraid in the slightest. Nowadays I'm afraid to even show you that. Thanks, Content ID. Or rather, thanks, DMCA. You're the reason I can't review movies. There is one more thing, though. Registration for Torkelson's games is... interesting. Apparently the $15 fee isn't just for one game, but for all of his games. Which isn't usually something I saw in the shareware scene. You also receive info on and a coupon for the Gamer Project. Sadly, I have absolutely no clue what this is. I feel like I'm shortchanging you all because, you know, this is the same person that got development screenshots of the Genesis Deep Space Nine game. But what can you do? I really did try to search for this. I just couldn't find anything. Some games you spend countless hours on because they're epic adventures that span a massive universe for you to explore. And there's some games you spend countless hours on because you think, I can definitely beat it this time. And obviously this game is one of the latter. I feel like I'm forgetting something, though. Oh right, Space Camel. Yes, there is literally a game which is, well, Camel. In space! This was made by Jed McCaleb in 1996, after both Camel and Desert Trek were already released. Yeah, I don't know about this one. 
It's not nearly as straightforward about how it works and has spelling errors all over the place. It doesn't even have slow and fast pace and seems to rely more on luck than camel or even desert trek. Look at your fuel and oxygen. You don't have any refills like in camel or desert trek, so this doesn't last very long. You have to land on planets and try your luck. If you even find any planets. If your fuel runs out, you have to wait around and let the pygmies catch up, hoping to find something. If you run out of oxygen, you die. You can also trade for supplies with your credits or any cargo you pick up or trade for. Or that ship could be a pirate and steal all of your stuff. Which you have no choice but to fight if you approach. You can't even just surrender your stuff if your hull is low. Basically, in Camel and Desert Trek, at least death sometimes feels like it's your fault. In Space Camel, most everything feels out of your control, and winning kinda feels like a fluke. However, there is a couple of interesting things. You can attack the traders, but then they won't trade with you later, and the Berbers, which are now an empire somehow, are more likely to detain you longer. If you've blasted pirates, you're more likely to get released quickly. Heck, it's almost good to run into the Berbers, they refill your fuel and oxygen when they release you. Maybe it's your charismatic... local Vulcan representative. Charismatic... Vulcan. Logic. What happened to my logic? Never mind, this game is obscure even in the context of my reviews. But there you have it, three games in one video. Have fun, happy trekking, and see you next time! <laughs> Ow, that kind of hurt. <laughs> Fuck. Don't don't do that with metal triggers, kids. Bad idea. Okay.